Hello and welcome back. We are into the second module of Standards 101, uh, the course of ERIFM. In the last module, uh, you got introduced to the basic concepts of tender. Uh, this module is uh, about tendering process types and stages. And I'm going to walk you through uh, uh, this module. Now, uh, essentially, we have to look at uh, what is a tendering process. As I explained to you in uh, one of the uh, slides in the previous uh, session, uh, a tender process has four stages. The first is the pre-tender, second is tender invitation uh, stage. The third stage is about tender opening, and fourth is tender finalization. Now, what is what are uh, the essential work which is required at, uh, at each of these stages? Now, a pre-tender stage is, uh, is the bedrock of successful tender. It lays the foundation for a tender which is contracted out well, which is performed well, and therefore it requires a lot of planning. So the fundamental aspect of pre-tender stage is to plan for, plan for uh, uh, the supply or plan for the works. Uh, now, what does planning essentially mean is, uh, is to, to, to have the drawings in place to get the quantity estimates right, to get the specification rights, uh, to have all the approvals in place. And these are all fundamental steps of a, of a, a, a good planning. So uh, pretend uh, the most important uh, step is planning for supply of works. Uh, second most important aspect uh, here is uh, to prepare the tender schedule. So tender schedule is, uh, is uh, like a uh, tabulated uh, uh, document in which uh, on one column we have items, on second column we could have quantity, fourth column, third column could be rate, and fourth column could be the total amount. But uh, the rest three columns are not as important. Uh, uh, so each of these columns are important, but the first and second column are critically important. Uh, reason being, uh, first column is about uh, having the details of item along with the specification, the desired specification that the buyer is looking for in place. And the second column is how many units or quantity of such items we want to buy, right? The third column is my uh, anticipation of rate for such items. And fourth is the total uh, uh, you know, amount. So that's uh, a tender schedule. Uh, then we also got to prepare the tender document in detail. When I say tender document in detail, it means that to have all the boilerplates, all the boilerplate templates, uh, standard documents, the performers in which the bidders are going to submit their bids. Uh, it should have the tender schedule, it should have the price bid, it should have general conditions of contract. And if there are any special conditions that I might want to put in the contract, everything becomes part of the tender document. It will also have uh, the qualification criteria for contractors uh, or suppliers to meet. So if they are, if they meet those thresholds, only then they would be considered in the bid. Uh, then at the pre-tender stage, uh, we need to decide whether the tender is going to be an open tender, a limited tender, a special limited tender, or a single tender. And the decision of uh, uh, tender type is a function of the reality, the business reality in which I exist. So if uh, the world is normal and the items that I'm going to procure are standard items which I have procured e even in the past, open tender is the most commonly resorted tool. But if, I, if the world is not so normal and I have to deal with only few suppliers or or, or proprietary items, or I have to deal with an emergency situation, then I can resort to limited, special limited, or single tender uh, methods. Then uh, an important stage in uh, pre-tender, uh, an important work in the pre-tender stage is preparation of tender notice. Now, uh, I'm sure you would have seen 
various gender notices on newspapers and that's worth the study because uh, tender notice uh, for public procurement has to be of proper uh, uh, type. It has to meet proper standards and criteria. And that's uh, something which is core to uh, uh, preparation of tender notice. Many people uh, go wrong in the preparation of tender notice and miss out the essentials, which uh, at a future date uh, uh, could be a potential risk uh, to the customer, can lead to court cases, can lead to disputes and other things. And that is why preparation of tender notice is uh, critical for successful tender. And then to have all approvals in place from the competent authority. So if the competent authority has uh, provided the approval, uh, so, so uh, tender inviting authority must have all the necessary approvals in place to incur public expenditure as uh, uh, explained in the canons of financial proprietary. The second stage uh, in tendering process is a tender invitation process, which means publication of tender notice, also called tender notice, invitation to tender, RFT, RFQ, etc. Uh, this stage also uh, involves issuing clarifications to the tenders, to the potential bidders, uh, or to conduct pre-bid conference, and to ensure uh, uh, successful participation of uh, bidders. So submission of tender is uh, also the part of tender invitation stage. Now, once tenders are submitted, then tenders have to be opened in a particular manner. And there are three things which are critical to tender opening. Uh, now, some of the things which uh, I have written here could be irrelevant in the case of e-tendering. But in a, in a non-e-tendering scenario, tender opening committee has to be there. There is a defined tender opening process. Everything has to be circled. You know, if there are corrections, if there are overwritings, then they have to be marked. And so there's, there are uh, multiple checks and balances which have to be exercised at tender opening stage. So as to avoid confusion uh, at a later date. And, and uh, an important aspect of tender opening is uh, upon opening, then, the, uh, then uh, there are people who are responsible for preparing something called uh, a tabulated statement or a comparative statement and a briefing note. And uh, these documents have to be in a standard form and uh, requires uh, preparation by uh, the executive and check stroke vetting by uh, accounts department. And the fourth stage of a tender process is tender finalization, which uh, uh, involves meeting of tender committee. Tender committee has to be of uh, right stature, right level, uh, as per the delegation of powers. Uh, so tender committee uh, deliberates on all the offers received. And then the job of tender committee is to, to make uh, either of the three recommendations to the tender accepting authority, and that is to accept a particular bid, to reject bids, or to go for or to recommend for negotiation with uh, the bidder. So, uh, in nutshell, uh, the tender process has four important stages. Uh, the first, which is uh, vitally important and lays the foundation for successful tender is uh, the preparatory stage, also called the pre-tender stage. The second is tender invitation. The third stage is uh, tender opening. And the fourth stage is uh, tender finalization, where the tender committee makes recommendation to tender accepting authority. I briefly mentioned about various types of tenders uh, in the previous session, and uh, let's uh, try and understand uh, uh, what these types are and how they are different. So, so the first and, and the most uh, commonly used tender type is an open tender. An open tender is one in which there is public advertisement of the tender. So these tenders get advertised in newspapers, in, on the websites, uh, at multiple forums. Uh, uh, and it is open for 
everyone to participate in the tender, right? When I say open for everyone to participate in the tender, which means that anyone can buy the tender document uh, by paying the tender fees and having paid the tender fees, he can then submit his bid. Uh, his bid would be considered, his or her bid would be considered provided he satisfies all the criteria for responsiveness of the bid. But essentially it is open for anyone and everyone to participate in an open tender. These notices are put in newspapers, put in on, on internet websites. There are multiple tender sites today. Uh, these notices are also put at uh, various railway offices, other government offices, uh, in local newspapers, in vernacular newspapers, and depending on the value of work, it could be in the national stroke, international newspapers. So if it's a global open tender, uh, the, the tender inviting authority should ensure that these bids are published in global newspapers at global tendering sites. It, uh, these are also published at uh, sent to Indian embassies, various Indian embassies all across the world for, uh, uh, for the notice of uh, interested parties to participate in the tender. So that's, uh, uh, that was uh, open tender. The second uh, uh, type of tender is uh, limited tender where it is not open for anyone and everyone to participate. It is, uh, it is only open to pre-approved suppliers or contractors. And uh, in this case, uh, these notices are sent to all the suppliers and contractors who form the part of approved list in railways. Uh, there's a term of uh, called approved list. So there's a pre-approved list of uh, suppliers and contractors who we work uh, with regularly. And uh, uh, in case of limited tender, uh, uh, the tender notice is sent only to contractors and suppliers in the approved list. Now, limited tenders are not usually resorted to. These are resorted to only in extraneous circumstances. And uh, the tender inviting authority has to, has to get approval for, uh, has, has to get approval from, from the right uh, uh, authority uh, to invite limited tender. And uh, it can only be invited in the case of public, recorded public interest. Now, the third type of tender is special limited tender. And the difference between special and, uh, uh, special limited tender and limited tender is very often uh, we might not have the approved list of contractors or approved list of suppliers. And, uh, uh, and if there are some uh, special or emergent work, so for example, uh, uh, there is uh, because of heavy rainfall, uh, the track formation, there are breaches in track formation and we want uh, contractors to be appointed uh, on urgent basis, then we resort to uh, then uh, there's a case to resort to special limited tender. Uh, the reason for it, uh, resorting to special limited tender and not going for limited tender is uh, could be only two. A, either the approved list is not ready or updated, and B, the nature of work is such that uh, people who are there in the approved list might not be able to, and these specialized nature of work could be done by very few contractors or suppliers. So you know that locomotives can only be made by Bombardier, ABB, uh, Alcos. It cannot be made by anyone and everywhere. And therefore, uh, special limited tenders, even if we don't have approved list, can only be sent to people who can, uh, you know, uh, make such products. And then single tender uh, is uh, also resorted to uh, under, exce under exceptional circumstances and such exceptional circumstances could be that there is only one supplier for the item, right? Now these are, uh, uh, these are proprietary item, very rare. For example, uh, for, for the tamping, for, for the tamping of track uh, and because railway committed uh, a lot of, uh, Indian railways committed uh, lot of uh, uh, work to, to 
let's say uh, placer so if uh, maintenance of placer machines have to be done it can only be done by placer organization which means that uh, you have to only resort to single tender right so so there could be extraneous circumstances these are exceptional circumstances and under those circumstances uh, single tenders have to be resorted to now usually the 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 time period for the notice period for uh, for submission of bid for uh, for open tender is uh, yeah, 30 days uh, in some circumstances, it can be brought down to 21 days. For limited tender, the notice period uh, could be less. For special limited tender, the notice period, uh, special limited, limited, and single tender, the notice period could be less. So uh, it's easier to uh, reach out to uh, these suppliers or contractors and then to finalize the tender quickly. Now, in tendering process, I want to talk to you about uh, another important criteria, uh, which is called tender staging. And tender staging uh, uh, means The other important stage uh, in tendering, the, the, the other important uh, aspect of tendering process is to decide uh, how many stages of tender you would have and how many packets. So let me explain uh, this to you. Uh, so, so the first type is actually single stage, single packet tender. Now, when we say single stage, single packet tender, which means that at a, in one instance, we want the tenderer to submit everything in one envelope. So when I say everything, uh, it means that the tenderer must submit uh, his technical offer and his price bid all in one envelope together. Now, a uh, single stage, single packet system is usually resorted to in situations where the scope of work and supply is very clear to the buyer. Right and uh, uh, and the bidders uh, evaluate uh, 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 and the tender committee is able to evaluate the bidders as per the criteria which is mentioned in the tender document. So everything, all my technical credentials, all my financial credentials, and my price bid, everything is submitted in one envelope and and uh, sent to the tender uh, accepting uh, to the tender uh, tender inviting authority. So that's single stage, single packet system, the first one. The second uh, type would be single stage, two packet system. Now, uh, in a two packet system, uh, the bidder is asked to submit uh, the technical uh, credentials and all the technical uh, part of the bid in a technical packet and uh, the price bid and all the financial conditions in the uh, in the financial packet. So uh, the technical packet is evaluated first, and only people who satisfy technical packet, their financial packet is opened, uh, and and then uh, uh, the best uh, bid is uh, identified. So in a single stage two packet. Uh, Two packets are submitted, and then these two packets is all sealed in uh, in a third packet. Uh, the technical packet is first evaluated. Every uh, in the tender document, it is mentioned what all should be submitted in the in the technical packet. Uh, upon the evaluation of technical packet, only such bidders who qualify uh, the evaluation criteria of technical packet, only their financial packet is opened. Now. As contrast to uh, the single stage tender, we can have two stage tender, and two stage tender uh, uh, are resorted to typically. If you remember, we discussed the case of EOI or uh, uh, RFP request for proposal. Now, essentially, uh, in stage one, a technical proposal is in uh, is called for from bidders, and uh, multiple bidders they submit their technical proposal and uh, 
and and by evaluating all the proposals from multiple bidders from the technical proposal the 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 uh, bid inviting authority or the tender inviting uh, authority then he evaluates and comes to his uh, notion of uh, of uh, uh, the items that he is looking for or he comes to notion of who could be uh, the suppliers who could fulfill his uh, uh, work goals and uh, uh, thus uh, technically few parties are shortlisted now these technically shortlisted parties are then sent the second stage bid in which there could be combination of technical and financial uh, offers to be made so so the difference between single stage two packet and stage two of two stage tender uh, uh, could be uh, could be that in stage two either i uh, in stage two we call for combination of uh, uh, technical and financial packet uh, from pre qualified bidders right but stage one is a filter in which we come to we come to uh, clarity about uh, who are the bidders who can fulfill an, uh, uh, our work requirement. Now, if you have any questions regarding this, then you can send me an email at uh, the email ID mentioned, shivesh at entrepreneurship.edu.in. Thank you for attending this session. We'll reconvene for the session three soon.